everybody, just a few videos ago, we released our review of the TrueNAS R10, and most of you liked it. Some of you said, well, that's a great video, but you didn't say anything about how well it performs. And you were right. Actually, that's because we've been planning from the beginning to do two videos on the TrueNAS R10, this one being that second video right now. So, buckle up, prepare yourselves, we're gonna go in deep and see how well the iX Systems TrueNAS R10 system performs. Let's get to it. All right, before we get into the results of the test, let's take a moment and talk about what and how we tested. Our tests are focused on SMB performance between a 10 gig direct connected Windows 10 Pro client and the TrueNAS R10. Crystal Dismark is our testing software of choice and it was used in these tests. Let's look at those results. Let's get to the first test results, the sequential one megabyte block test with a Q depth of eight and a thread of one. In this test, the TrueNAS R10 buried the needle on our 10 gig connection, essentially fully saturating the read speed regardless of the test file size. This was impressive, but also expected considering the system has 16 SSDs. In the write speed test, we saw equally impressive performance all the way through the 13 different tests. Considering that this test is typical of the workstation's performance, users won't have any issues reading and writing to the R10. On to the next test, the sequential 1 megabyte block test with a Q depth of 1 and a thread of 1. This test is the worst case scenario for sequential read writes and again the R10 showed great numbers though with a clear preference to write performance. Throughout all the test file sizes, the numbers stayed consistent. Now on to our first of two random read write tests. First stop the random 4K block with a Q depth of 32 and a thread of 1. In this test, the R10 showed a clear preference to read performance across all tests and starting at the one gigabyte test file size started to show how hard random access can be for storage systems. And our final test, the random 4K block test with a Q depth of one and a thread of one. This test is truly the worst case performance scenario for a storage system. And we see that reflected here in the transfer rates on the R10. Keep in mind that if you need high performance random 4K block read writes, you'd provision storage specifically for that workload. These numbers are for reference for the rare times that you'd be reading and writing in this way. Okay, I have one more thing to talk about before we finish this video out. Since TrueNAS uses OpenZFS for its file system and volume management, it's fair to say that how you provision your pool has an impact on your storage performance. The tests we previously showed here were tested against the R10 with the storage pool provisioned as eight sets of mirrored VDEVs. We also rebuilt the pool as one single large Z3 and tested the performance again. Instead of running through those graphs again, because they're very similar in performance, let's average the test performance out and see how well they stack up. Overall, the performance between the two different pool layouts were similar, with read performance being identical between pool layouts with the exception of the sequential 1 megabyte block with the Q depth of 1 and the random 4K with the Q depth of 32 showing better performance for the mirrored VDEVs. In write, however, the mirrored VDEV pool layout was quite a bit faster in every test, with both suffering under the random 4K with a Q depth of 1. Of course, the downside to 8 mirror paired VDEVs is the disk cost in this regard. In our R10 eval unit, the eight mirrored VDEVs provisioned into a pool provided us a pool size of 13.74 terabytes versus the 20.15 terabytes of the RAID Z3. Let's take a moment to visualize the disk layout for those who aren't familiar with what we're talking about. On the left, we've got eight pairs of disks all in little boxes to indicate they're in a mirror VDEV. The larger box that encompasses all eight pairs is the pool itself. Conceptually, this is how the disks are arranged in the pool. This pool out is more expensive as you essentially lose nearly half of your disks to redundant pairs, but as we saw in the performance testing, provides better write performance overall. Now let's look at the RAID Z3 pool. As you can see, all 16 disks are collected in a single pool with three of the disks being different from the rest. These disks are essentially lost to redundancy for the pool itself. In this pool configuration, the system could lose three drives before any data would be lost. This layout is more cost effective than the other pool layout because you have more storage space by losing only three drives for redundancy, but at the cost of slower performance. For those of you out there who are familiar with ZFS and wonder why we selected RAID Z3 over RAID Z1 or Z2, this was chosen by default because TrueNAS Core recommended this disk layout when we selected all of the drives. Welcome to the end of the video <laughs> with, with Rich. Here I am. Who has spent quite a bit of time with the R10. Yes. So, video. Part two. Part two. Let's talk performance. Okay. What do you think? Uh, 
in the sequential tests, it rock and rolled, right? We, we did this test with 10 gigabit connected, uh, client, a client directly connected via 10 gig, and it mm -hmm. saturated that connection with the uh, the multiple queues. And that's what you expect. You expect that sort of level of performance from an all flash array, and it had no problem doing it. So, you know, in, in a NAS role where you're deploying this on a network and you've got clients that are, you know, with multiple queue depths like that, it's going to kick butt for sure. Okay. So, random. Random. Random, you know, the thing with random, and we talk about this every time we do a, uh, a storage performance review test, is that random, to get really good random performance results, you need to have built the array or the system to be uh, specifically designed to handle those random 4K read-write tests, right? Mm -hmm. If you take a, a standard disk uh, array and you plug it in and you throw a bunch of random rewrites at it, you're typically not going to see great results because you need to provision things differently. Your caches need to be different. You need to have all of these these different things to make it so that it can handle those sort of um, workloads, right? Right. And this this system is, is you know, as we provisioned it, set up is, is more of a traditional NAS, and it showed that, right? Mm -hmm. But it still did a great job. All right. Uh, second part of the video here, I mean, is there anything else you didn't include that you feel like we need to talk about? I, I think mainly it's just addressing the speed. Yeah, you know, I, we got a we got some flack because we, we did the first video and it's you know with more of a review about it. We we opened it up. That's the thing we like to do is look inside and see how things are done. Mm -hmm. And so it was good to to get a video out that was specifically about the performance. Um, I really wanted to test the 100 gigabit. Yeah. On it, but I was having issues. Uh, side note: our 100 gigabit card doesn't work right. So that's a that's a side. That's something for you and I to talk about when we have to buy another oh, darn. hundred gig excuse uh, to buy more toys. Right. Oh. So, um, but that would be the other thing to test is you know I, I felt like when we were doing the test for the sequential read write that there was more overhead there. Like we could get more because uh, I was seeing like the limit of the throughput of that ten gigabit connection, and I wish I'd had something that was faster so I could see really where it topped out. But maybe next time. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get some other hardware and. You know, next video down the road, but yeah, that's that was that was the only thing I wish I could have done. All right, cool. Well, Richard, thanks for your time. Thank you, John. Thank you. You clearly love Enterprise Storage as much as we do, and I mean, why wouldn't you, right? So go over here and check out the video we did on the TrueNAS M40 Storage Array.